Okay, this will be a quick tutorial on how we set up Lemur for use with the uh, Liquid Rhythm interface. So right now I've got Liquid Rhythm loaded up in Ableton Live. First thing we want to look at is I've got Ableton and uh, Liquid Rhythm is sitting on a track in Ableton on its own channel, okay? This is important to understand because it really doesn't matter where this goes normally because it's just a door that's happening back and forth between our program and Ableton. But uh, for the purposes of using the lemur, we're trying to take the MIDI information that will be generated from the lemur and have it flow through this track because the track is set to input monitor, okay? So this needs to be set up a certain way. Most people kind of think that the, the liquid rhythm needs to be on the same track as the drum machine you want to use at. It's really not set it up that way. It's more that we're using the clips in, in, that are inside um, any track that you're using to trigger, and we're editing that clip live on the fly. So it doesn't matter where this goes, but in this case, we need it to go here, okay? Very important. So it's on its own track, and you've got the input monitor set up, okay? And now we're going to go to the lemur, take a real quick look, we'll set this guy up. First thing we want to make, make sure that um, we've set up our network, so um, if you need more information on that, you can check out the lemur site on how to set up a, an ad hoc network. Basically, at home, or you know, if you're using it in your studio, it's fine if you're running this off of the same network you're on. So on my computer, I'm set up to be on my network brand photo desk, and over here we've got the same thing. So we know that the, uh, the iPad is uh, happening, and it's on the good, uh, good connection. Open up the lemur. I'm going to go into the, into the side panel here and go to more settings, right? And I want to make sure that my MIDI targets are set to go from, well, right now it's, this is my computer, Jason Spanner's computer, Damon zero, and input and output are basically set um, to correspond with at least the first, the first uh, port, okay? If you look at your preferences in Ableton, you've got this sort of uh, long list of choices you could play with in terms of the Damon, um, but you know, we're just set up to use daemon input zero, okay? Sort of a default thing. So next thing you want to do, we've got the uh, we've got our lemur running, okay? If I just hit some information right now and I take a look over on the side here, I should see that I've got MIDI generation coming on, okay? Now, if I flip over into Liquid Rhythm, what we have to do is go into uh, make sure I'm looking at a clip first, and go into the, the top menu here in Options and MIDI mapping mode. We want to go ahead and make sure that we've loaded the, uh, you know, imported that mapping file, okay? So that, that would be this, this object here, um, depending on which version you're using. So if you're using this as a standalone, um, you're gonna load the standalone version, and if you're gonna use this uh, with Ableton Live and so inside Liquid Clips, then you're gonna load the Clips version, okay? So that's got the, the routings done. So I've got that loaded already. I can go into my MIDI mapping thing, and it'll actually look like, yeah, tons of stuff's mapped, ready to go. And then it's just a matter of, checking it out. So I'm just going to go to my, my kick track here, and I'm just going to play with some of these little dudes here. And you can see that they are mapped to different objects in the beat form sequencer here. And before you know it, that's cool. I have up and down arrows. Everything's happening. And it's important to note, again, that this is information that's coming through this MIDI pipe. It's coming from Ableton Live, going through a door, and then our software is looking for that door. Okay? If this isn't set up with an input monitor, it won't work. Alrighty. Now let's take a look at how it actually does work. So back on a clip here, and I've got some kicks in there. If I hit play, okay, and let's keep going. I'm gonna go up to my snare track, add in a snare pattern I like. Okay, so we've got the B-form sequencer set up here. We've got a little bit of uh, editing um, parameters, copy, paste, delete, duplicate, drag. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've got various sections that pertain to the molecule tools, okay? So you'll have your accent modifiers, the bar form list, which is a nice way of getting your suggestions. Uh, if I go over to my hi-hats, I can probably dial in like a hi-hat here. Go back down here, play with this guy. All right. Um, the beat form tumbler, again, two different modes, beat mode and position mode. I can dial in some, some, some various permutations to my, my pattern. And uh, cycle the beat form left to right so I can move the, the, the objects around internally inside that bar form. My randomizer. With all that stuff ready to go, you just have to start playing around with it. Now, this is on the main page. If I go to each one of these other pages, we'll have all of that information spread out. So it's, this is a condensed view of all that, all those parameters. 
And then over here, we've got each one splayed out in a larger format. So you have more interaction, super fun, start and stop, fun stuff. Yep, that's it. Enjoy. Good luck.